Good morning and welcome to day number 20. Uh, today I actually have an appointment with my personal trainers and so uh, my wife and I are going to go together and we work out when we go meet with our trainers. So that's at 4 o'clock which means I'm not going to do my full workout this morning. But I know myself well enough to know if I go and try to meditate right now, I'm just going to fall right asleep. So I'm still going to do some cardio, even though there's a part of me that just really, really wants to go and try to meditate because I love to just sit down and relax. But I know I'll fall asleep if I do that right now. So I'm still going to do some cardio enough to get my blood pumping and get myself woken up. And then I'll jump straight into the rest of my power hour and I'll let you know how it goes. Hello and welcome. This is video two of day number 20. So I want to start by reporting on my power hour. As I mentioned this morning, I actually didn't get up and uh, do my workout. I just went right into my power hour, just enough workout to wake up. And what was interesting is I felt really lazy all day long. I felt like not taking control and, and just sitting around and not doing anything, which is interesting because I still did my power hour, but I didn't do the first step, which is conquer your body. And therefore, my body still thought I was in, in control and trying to take control all day. So again, that's the reason why we do this power hour as early in the morning as we can. As soon in the day as we can do the power hour, the better. Um, and until I finally actually, when I did work out, I took control and I actually made some really cool decisions, saw some cool uh, results as I was working out that I'll talk about tomorrow. But today we're going to talk about, as we mentioned yesterday, going to continue on with those same four questions, which is, is that true? Can you absolutely know it's true? How do you react when you believe that thought, and how do you react, or, and how would you be without that thought? So let's, uh, I want to go through these again, because sometimes people run up against problems and blocks. They try to ask themselves these four questions. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so they just throw it out. This is a really, really good and very important process for you to understand how to conquer your life, because it's a process of understanding why you're reacting to things, understanding a little bit more about your psychology, and exploring your negative thoughts so that you can learn how to get rid of them, which is so important. A lot of people never want to look at their negative thoughts, even though they're still there and they're always running through their head. They never want to consciously pay attention to them, so they just let them stay in their subconscious life for their entire, in their subconscious mind for their entire lives. And guess what? <laughs> You've seen the results. That's why we're doing this program, to change something. We have to take a moment and focus on the negative thoughts that we have inside of us so we can get rid of them. And during that process, you're ask, asking the questions. I've seen people run up against two main obstacles. And I'm going to talk about two different, uh, I'm going to talk about the first obstacle and two different ways you can deal with that. So the first obstacle is with the first two questions, can I absolutely know it's true? And, or with you know, the second, can I absolutely know it's true? You say, what if my answer is still yes? You've got one of two options. Either you continue to dig and you continue to open your mind and you continue to explore. This is a meditative process taught to help you understand your own thoughts and your own mind better than you ever have before. It's going to take some effort. So put some effort into it and think, okay, can I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely know it's true? Or maybe start to ask yourself the question, what is it that I'm really upset about? Am I really upset about what happened, or am I really upset about that I think it shouldn't have happened? I can make a very big difference. And then you start to ask your, the four questions that way. It can totally change the game. And then the second thing is that what if you just say, you know what, that doesn't apply, and that first thing doesn't apply, and, and I still know it's true. Then what? Well, then you just move on anyways and you start looking at the other questions because you'll still learn some amazing stuff. So let me tell you an example. Let's say uh, you got punched in the face. Somebody came up and punched you in the face at some time and it made you really, really upset and you're really angry. And every time you think about that, you just get so frustrated and anger and angry and you still hate that person. You don't want to talk to him ever again. So you start and asking yourself the questions. Is it true? Can I absolutely know it's true? Yes, of course I know it's true. I mean, I was there. I was the one that got hit. I saw the whole thing. So then you start to expand and really look at it. I mean, are you really upset that you got hit in the face? Or are you upset that you believe that you shouldn't have got hit in the face? And you're like, what? Who? I mean, why am I even asking this question? Well, think about it. Think about in movies. In, in movies, 
there's someone that, you know, always gets uh, something bad happens in the end, especially like in, in chick flick movies. There's always the guy that in the end gets left because, you know, the romance is between the main character and this girl, but she's with this other guy. So what they do throughout the course of the movie is they make the guy who she's supposed to leave or, or whatever it is in the end of a movie, something ha bad happens to the bad guy. So they make him seem like a jerk and they just make him seem like a total tool. So you're wanting something bad to happen. So that when you see that person go through pain, normally we don't like seeing people go through pain, but they've set the movie up in such a way that we're like, ha, that guy deserved it. And we love seeing people get what they deserve in our mind. So is it possible that maybe you did need that? Maybe you kind of deserved, maybe you were being a jerk and you needed some kind of a wake-up call or some kind of a reminder. Again, this is a meditative process taught to help you understand your life and your results. And maybe you say, you know what, that doesn't even apply. In this situation, I've really explored that and it still doesn't apply and I still know what happened. Then what? Like I said, you move on. You move on to the next question, which is, can I? Uh, how do I react? And you say, well, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I get ticked off, I hate that person, all these things. And then who would you be without that thought? And you say, geez, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so angry. I could maybe be friends with that person or I can maybe love that person again, which is so important because any type of negative emotion that we feel, especially directed towards other people, is so out of alignment with who we really are that we begin to lose our power because we're not in alignment. And we also begin to lose our power because we're giving it away. Now, let me show you exactly how. Think about it. As you started to explore that, you say, this is how I am believing that thought, you know, or, or whenever I think about the thought that he punched me, and this is how I am when I let go of the thought. Well, then it's clear that the thought is what's causing you the pain, not what actually happened. Because your face probably doesn't hurt anymore. It was maybe a week ago, or a month, or years ago. And your face stopped hurting forever ago, and yet still, at the same time, you're hurting inside today. And it's not getting hit in the face. It's not what happened that's hurting you. It's your thoughts today that are continuing to hurt you and bring you pain. That's why this is so important in understanding how to conquer your life. Because sometimes conquering your life is, uh, not sometimes, always conquering your life starts in here and in here. It starts inside of you, always. That's why we do these four questions and go through this whole process. The next problem I see with people doing these four questions and not wanting to do it is they say, well, if I were to do that process, the results wouldn't change. So why would I even do it? Because I want results. I want something different. And I don't want to just accept things as they are and learn to be okay with everything because I want some things to change. Here's where this process gets really powerful. Is that oftentimes, once your mind is actually clear, that's when you can change something. In fact, almost all the time, very rarely do you ever create good results in your life out of a place of hating. People don't get wealthy out of a place of hating poverty. They don't get fit out of a place of hating where they're at currently with their physical body. It just doesn't work that way. And so learning to let go of that actually helps you to create the better results. And you're telling yourself, oh, well, I like the fact that I hate poverty because that's what's going to drive me to get lots of money. It never works that way. People who hate being poor stay poor forever. I'm sorry, that's just the way that it works. And in every area of your life, that's the way it's going to work. Which really, I mean, in, in that conversation brings me to the next part of this whole process, these four questions, because I've been talking all along about looking at other people and their life and what they've done to upset you. That's where it starts. And then it gets to move towards looking at other people and or looking at every aspect of your life and what's really bothering you in any area, whether it's your money or your body or your relationships, and start to explore those or the judgments on yourself. Then, after you've figured it out on other people, because it's so much easier to see other people than it is to see ourselves, after we've done that, though, we get to apply it to ourselves. 
and it becomes really powerful because all the issues in our lives we have control over and we can learn to get rid of all the negativity. Negativity is not in alignment with who we are. Therefore, it's not outside. It's not anything that happens that creates the negativity, negativity within us. It's all us allowing that negativity to come in and dwell inside of us. And if you want to get rid of it, and if you want to conquer your life, then you need to learn this lesson. So continue asking yourself these four questions. Go onto the website as well, because after the four questions, it goes a little bit deeper and starts to process you and say, why is it really bothering you? Because people do all kinds of things. And sometimes somebody does something that really bothers you, and sometimes other people do other things that don't bother you at all. Why, do that, why does that one thing bother you? Oftentimes there's a reason, something deep inside. So this process of work goes a little bit deeper. For our conversations, all we're going to go as far as the first four questions. And then after that, there's three turnarounds. You should go on the website, learn more about it. And, uh, and then tomorrow, like I said, we've got some really exciting stuff planned. And until then, remember, you have the power to conquer your life.